When working on your pieces, do you look at the big picture or do you focus on the small details? Hopefully in this video, I'll be able to show you a few ways you could do both at the same time and why it's probably better for you. Welcome back everybody. My name is Gamma Trap, one word. I hope you're staying safe and I hope your life is as stress-free as possible. When talking about this stuff, it's gonna be mostly talking about digital work, but there's still concepts that can be applied for traditional stuff. So if you're a traditional artist, you can feel free to stick around and enjoy this. But most of this is going to be angled towards digital because most of my work is in Photoshop and a lot of these aspects are tools and things you can do in Photoshop. Again, it's up to you. So there's some pros and cons to working with both big picture and zooming in on the details. The big picture stuff, obviously you get to see the entire picture. That's why I call it the big picture. You get to see the the complete balance and the composition of everything and every every change that you do is clearly visible. So you're seeing what your viewer or audience member is going to see at first glance. Now the big downside to this is you don't actually get to see from that zoomed out perspective all the details that you could add if you were to zoom in. Now the upsides of working in the details is obviously you get to work on the details. Zooming in gives you a chance to actually add the thread texture on someone's shirt or the links in the chains or the blood splatter on the walls or as an artist you get to add all kinds of enriching details in your piece. The downside, the trade-off you could say, is you don't get to see when you're zoomed in how those things you do affect the overall piece as a big picture. Now to help demonstrate all this we're going to be using this piece that I finished recently, Darth Vader. Probably by far one of my favorite villains of any anything the more i think about it the more i really can't I, I i don't got a villain that can top the vader if you could think of one or if you have one already just just off the top of your head comment below who do you think could beat darth vader in the villain game don't forget to like the video by the way while we're at it so here we have vader zoomed out and you can see everything at a glance this is the big picture point of view we were talking about earlier if you were to work purely zoomed out, this is pretty much how you'd work. You would do all the colors and everything from this point of view, way back here. The downsides obviously are the downsides. You can't do any of the cool detail work you would be able to do if you were zoomed in. So we want to try and work around that. If we zoom to 100%, we are able to see the blending, the brushwork. We can see the dots and the embers of the lava that's flowing around him in this really hostile environment. We can see the cool light effects on his helmet. We can see all kinds of cool details, the rips in his armor and the texture added to the background to make it look like it was on a canvas. We can see all this cool stuff, but if we were to do just anything right here, we won't be able to see what that is doing to the entirety of the piece, the overall balance of the piece, unless we zoom out like so. But that kind of ruins the flow because you, know, you don't want to zoom out and zoom in all the time, right? So here's how we go about fixing that problem. Now, if you look at a lot of my previous time lapses, you probably have seen what we're about to do right now. We're going to make two windows to see simultaneously. And the way we do that is we go to Window, Arrange, and New Window for Vader. Now, this is going to be New Window for whatever the name of your Photoshop document is. It could be new window for, you know, boat, new window for cat, whatever you named your file, or new window for new file, or whatever it is. So we're going to click that, and you see we've got a new tab, which is nice. It is a complete clone of the original Vader. Anything you do to this one will be on this clone as well. But obviously... You don't want to be switching back and forth. So Photoshop has a really cool thing where you can take these windows and move them around. So if you wanted to, you can work like this. Pretty nice, pretty neat. Now, there's a cool way to actually tidy this whole thing up. If you go to Window and Arrange, and you go to Two Up Vertical, it just slots them into perfection. Now, you could do it a little more precise and actually drag these windows to be... A little more form fitting, which is what I always do. So again, if you've seen a lot of my previous time lapses, including this time lapse of Darth Vader that's going to be out pretty soon, you're going to see this setup where you see the main Vader on the left and on the right. You see me zoomed in and working. Now let's think back to that previous time where we zoomed in and we added some stuff. And just like that, on the main piece, the big one over here, we are able to see the change that we have affected. Right, so if we put some white there, 
there's that giant splotch of white. And we're able to work in small details and see the effects it has on the overall piece. We can rotate, we can zoom in, we can zoom out, we can add a little extra sheen. See so you know how much I love my, my shiny to this metal here. And as I'm doing this, you can see right over here what I'm doing to this piece. So the overall benefit that this provides is you are able to work in your details, add in all the little, all the little things you want, and at a glance, you can just look over to the side and see what changes it's doing to the overall balance, composition, color palette of the main piece, which is very important because when a person looks at your piece, they're going to see the big picture first. And so that needs to be a perfect form fit to whatever you're going for. If you're going for something scary or spooky, you don't want to do something in the small details like this that would make it less scary or spooky or warming and welcoming or however you're trying to make the piece feel. Now, one thing I will note is that this is probably the best way you can go about doing this full, like these are two files, these are clones, actual files. And we're gonna go into another way pretty soon. But every time you do a thing on either of them, it will show up on the other. So if I come over here and add giant squiggles, it'll show up on this one as well but only after you lift your brush or unclick your mouse. So I can do this huge swiggle and it's not showing up on the other one, but as soon as I lift my mouse, someone just threw a small shiny white bird's nest at Darth Vader and good luck to him. <laughs> now, if you're a artist and you wanna make cool time lapses and you've got a, a regular horizontal piece, and it's roughly the same size or dimensions as a monitor or a TV, like the 16 by nine ratio that most screens are. This is a really interesting way to show that piece being made from start to finish without you know, giving your, your audience members a headache while you're zooming in and around rotating. Now, I have some time lapses that don't have this, this window right here and it's just, it's just really fast zooming and, and twisting and turning and all that stuff. And I'll be the first to admit, it kind of does give you a headache. It's kind of hard to watch sometimes because I'm so, I work fast and I work crazy and I work loose and just all that. So if you want to provide your audience with a much more calm experience that is possibly less headache or seizure inducing in the worst, worst case, having a piece that is just a clone if you have this window, and again, it'll be like a horizontal piece, so not this vertical thing. You can have your screen recording software, your OBS or Streamlabs recording just this window. And if you make it full screen, and again, it has to be like a horizontal piece, you can watch it being made, you know, without having to zoom in and rotate and all that craziness, which is probably a lot easier for a lot of audience members to enjoy your content. There's a lot of videos that I've actually made that do this. Uh, there's a couple that I've made off the top of my head, like Cloudway or Coming Home, some of the more favorites, I guess you could say. They are just, for the most part, static images being made from nothing because I have a duplicate that my screen recording software is recording while I'm working and zooming in and going all nuts on, on the original. Now that is way number one, to see both the big picture and details. We're gonna go into way number two here, which is actually probably more common than this way that I'm, I just said, the clones, right? We're gonna be working with the Navigator. Now you probably have seen this before. This is, it's usually like kind of small and, and docked way up here, right? The Navigator is essentially what that clone was, but on a much smaller scale. And it's not a copy, it's not a clone of the file. It's not a Photoshop file itself. It's just like a camera's pointed at it and that's, that's all. It's really nothing else. All you see, all this thing's really good for is if you're looking at the details, if you'll notice I'm on the left of Vader's helmet, this has a little box to the left of Vader's helmet. This box is the border of this window that I see. So if I zoom out, that box is gonna get bigger, see? And you can actually grab the box and move it around here. So. If you're not recording and if you don't want a clone or a copy and if you're okay with it being a little smaller and a little less defined and, and you can move it around, you can make it a little bigger if you want to, but 
I mean, if you're cool with that, that's another great way. If you're recording, I wouldn't, I wouldn't suggest recording the Navigator because it's, it's, not a, it's not a Photoshop document. It's, it's far less detail. It's really hard to try and make sure it looks clean and crisp. It's just used as a thumbnail. And I've, I've gone over thumbnails a million times and I'll probably go over them a million more. So if you are looking for a thumbnail, you can have your Navigator, you know, nice and tiny and way off to the side, you know, while you're working. It's, it's super useful. And honestly, while I do all this stuff with the big piece and, and the clone to the side, I usually do on my second monitor over here, I have a small, I have the Navigator open and it's really small like this right here. And I shove it off to the side kind of over here so I can barely see it when I'm looking at it with looking at my references. And it's really useful because I still love thumbnails despite the fact that I have a big picture view and a, a view that I can zoom in. It's, like I said, it's just nice to have a thumbnail version. So those are the two main ways you can see the big picture while also working on the details at the same time. I hope you found this video useful, helpful, or entertaining. If it is either of those things, feel free to give it a like. And big thank you to my amazing patrons. If you'd like to see more tutorials like this, feel free to subscribe and leave a comment down below with what tutorial you would like to see next. Now, if I was gonna offer a uh, useful tip on finding out what cool tutorials I have to offer, I would suggest looking back at a lot of my videos. If you click right around there, probably, I'm gonna put a playlist of tutorials that I've already made. Uh, you can just go check some are really in depth, like how to render metal, and that's a big one. And there's some smaller ones, like little technical stuff, kinda like this. Either way, thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this useful, helpful, and entertaining, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.